Okay. Now, remember the function that we are concerned with is the complex value function we are concerned with x plus, plus x squared plus i x. So c would be simply this one, okay, and this one over here. So c would be equals to the square root of x dash squared plus y dash squared. Okay, and what is y dash squared? Y dash squared is simply this thing squared. If we put in x dash inside, okay, we got x dash squared plus x dash 4 plus, there will be 2, so it will be 2i x dash. Okay, let me just check. Correct, and then will be a x dash, so it's minus x squared here like that. Okay, so i times i is minus 1. Okay, that looks good. x dash, okay, so... This one will cancel out with this one over here, and we have a, uh, sorry, this is x3, okay. Yeah, so we will have a x dash 4 plus 2i x dash 3, okay. What we can do is that we can bring out the x dash, okay, so we bring out the x dash, which is a x dash square, square root that, and then we'll square root again the x dash square plus 2i x dash, okay. Yeah, okay, just checking this times with this, this times with this, we get this one over here. So, this would be x dash and x dash squared plus 2i x, x dash, 2i x dash. Okay, and then what we're going to do is that same as what we did over here, we're going to take, we're going to approximate, approximate by letting x dash equals to 0. So, as this tends towards this, we will investigate the nature of how when p travels to q. Okay, so as x dash tends towards 0, okay, c would be approximately equals to this tends, this x dash squared tends to 0 much faster, as I always want to emphasize, okay? So, c dash, sorry, c would approximately equals to x dash and square root 2i uh, x dash, okay? I think that is pretty obvious. So, now we got this one over here, the approximation of c, the straight path and the approximation of S, the curved path, okay? So, I'll just write this over here. 2i x dash, okay, and let's just see what we have. The amazing, bizarre result to really prove time travel is possible. Now, before I proceed, I just want to ask you the question. If time travel is possible, would that mean that the ratio of S to C would be less than 1. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, you see, if the ratio, as we take the limit, as x dash tends towards 0, this point will tend much closer to here, but we are still investigating how are we going to travel from P to Q, right? And in order to investigate that, we will investigate the relationship between the two distances, the normal curved path or the normal straight line path, okay? So just keep that in mind. We want to investigate the, the relationship between the, the normal path or the straight line path to see what do we have or how this mathematical wormhole will show itself. So, if you guys are ready, the limit as x dash tends towards 0, okay? It would be simply s over c, right? Okay, I mean, this is the, the limit we want to find out, okay? And this is equals to the limit of Okay, I'll just write it out again, x dash, test was 0, okay, of s, which is this one here, root 4i, okay, 2 over 3, and x dash 3 over 2, over this one over here, which is x dash, which is square root of 2i, and I'll just write it like that, okay. So, equals to the limit as x dash tends, sorry, x dash tends towards 0. Okay, now, half, this is 1 and this is half. So, that's 3 over 2. So, and this is 3 over 2 over here. So, this will cancel out with this. Okay, okay I hope that you can see that. Now, this one is, is a root 4. Okay, so this is a root 1. Sorry, it's a root uh, imaginary number. So, we can cancel out this. And this is also a root of an imaginary number. So, we can, can cancel out this. Okay, and what are we left with? Well, we are left with 2 root 2, 4 divided by 2, divided by 3. Okay, and since we've eliminated x dash, we can say that this, okay, is equals to 2 
root 2 over 3, okay, S over C, which is approximately equals to 0 0.9428. And that is the magical number. Okay, so analyzing it, okay, analyzing what we have here, as x dash tends towards 0, so as q goes closer to p, and what do we find out? We find out that s, okay, is 6% shorter than c. And it would imply that the old adage of saying the shortest line between two points is a straight line. Well, that's not the case because the, the arc length, the curve path, or the, the way around the curve is 6% shorter than C. So, if I were to let this test towards 0 and I would magnify that, okay, I'll get this again. Okay, sorry for, for my illustration, which is quite uh, layman, but I would put it in layman's terms for those who don't really understand. Okay? If what I did here is that the limit as x dash tends towards 0. So, I, I let x dash tends towards all the way here, but we're still investigating the ratio of s and c over here, which is the ratio of the length of s and c, the curve length and the straight line length. Okay, so if I were to magnify it again, we found out that S is 6% shorter than C. Okay, so it means I'm traveling along here, and then when I reach about here, okay, which is a 6% difference, I would have already reached Q according to what it says over here. Now, and that would simply mean that I have traveled to, to Q um, in, in a, like, uh, how to say, in a outside the space and time continuum because of that small 6% there where there's nothing there but I'm still using a wormhole okay, travel all the way to Q and that is the mathematical wormhole as proof using mathematics and complex numbers